Hey guys, what's up? B coming to you from Guns and Accessories today. And today I just want to do a fun little gun review. Um, I'm not going to do an extensive review on this at all. But this is the Bug Assault, the original soft gun. I saw this on Facebook a couple weeks ago and decided to, to try it out. And I just want to give you a few little thoughts on this thing. Like I said, just a fun little gun thing. I'm not going to put a whole bunch of these up. But... Um, so what they say about this is it's time to fire your fly swatter. So it's what this thing does is you fill up this hopper up here, your magazine I guess you could call it. Fill up your magazine with salt. You pump this one time, it's already ready to go, and then you have to switch your safety off. And I'm definitely going to talk about this thing in a little bit, this piece of junk in a little bit. Okay? This is what this is what makes this gun stink. But it can be fixed. So anyways, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But you pump it once. You've got to bring this forward. If it's not forward, it won't shoot. Switch off the safety and then you're ready to shoot a fly. Okay? Now, several things that that I've learned through <coughs> excuse me, through trial and error on this. First of all, the salt that I was using at first was um, I don't know, my wife's always trying different types of salt and try to get healthy salt and all this kind of stuff. And I think the stuff I was using at first was something that she had, and it was like really fine powdered salt, and it didn't work, and I was kind of disappointed at first. Well, I went and bought some new ammunition, and it was some cheaper salt, and it had bigger grains, and I know I won't be able to show you exactly. Well, you can see a little bit there. It's, it's a little bit bigger grain salt, and this worked way, way better than that original stuff. So then you're thinking, well, why don't I go get rock salt or some kosher salt or some huge grains? Well, then it won't feed into the firing mechanism. So there's kind of a sweet spot there where if you get the powder so small, <laughs> it won't do a very good job. It just doesn't have the ability to kill the fly. Um, but then on the other side, if you get it too big, then it's not going to feed. So um, this, I think, is kind of a medium-sized grain probably. I mean, as, as far as I know, I'm not a salt expert, but anyways, this size grain that I've got right here works works way better than the first one. So if you're having problems with it, that's one thing I would try is try different grain salt, different size grain. The other thing that I noticed is, so obviously you're going to be shooting kind of a shotgun pattern here. And, you know, a lot of people have the misconception, like on a real shotgun, that if you shoot a shotgun, like you say you shoot it in your room, and by the time the shot gets to the other side of the room that the pattern is going to be so big that it's going to cover the entire wall. Well, that's just not true, and there's lots and lots of videos on YouTube disproving that idea. When you shoot a shotgun, if you shoot it across a room, a, a, just a normal size room, you're not going to have a very big pattern. You're going to have a three or four inch pattern maybe across a full size room. And so that's kind of the same thing that's going on here, is um, the pattern doesn't get huge. And... Um, Anyways, my problem was at first I was getting up too, I was getting too close to, to, to the fly, I believe. And um, I was probably getting up six inches, six to eight inches. And I, I think it's what was happening is, first of all, the pattern was so small that I would have to be exactly on and I wasn't, wasn't aiming properly at first anyways. But then also I think a lot of what happens whenever you're that close is I think probably the air hits the fly first and pushes it out of the way and then the salt doesn't do its job. So once I figured out to pull it away and get it about 12 to 18 inches, then that's whenever I hit my sweet spot. And I think we're closer to 12 inches, but somewhere in that neighborhood of a foot to foot and a half was really kind of the perfect, um, the perfect range to shoot from. Once I got those two problems figured out, got the, the right size grain of salt and figured out the right distance, then I was slaughtering flies with this. And I'm gonna roll in some video here of me showing me shooting some flies. So let's go ahead and talk about the problems with this gun. There are some things about this gun that, that stink as far as a, as a gun goes. 
The first thing is the siding system. Now, of course, I mean, this is a toy, so the siding system really is not that big of a deal. It's not going to be precise. And also, I forgot to say this, whenever you're cocked and ready to go, this, this indicator comes up. It's like a loaded chamber indicator. And um, so, so I'm ready to fire right now, and the safety is off. But if you'll notice, the back is a V, and the front side is a V. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. If I'm aiming like this, if I'm trying to shoot, let me see if I can focus this. Okay. If you have two V's, that doesn't make sense. You're supposed to have your V and a blade on the front, and of course, you know, whenever you're shooting a, a pistol or, or anything, you're supposed to focus on your front sight. Well, you can't focus on your front sight here. Again, I know this is a toy, and so the sighting system really doesn't matter. I've gotten to where um, the way I can aim this perfectly is I just set this right up against my chin, and with that against my chin, I've, I've just figured out the sweet spot to be able to shoot it. But that's one reason that proves to me that uh, whoever made this, I mean, maybe there is a reason for having two V's here, but should have your V and a blade to be able to sight better. The other major problem with this thing is this thing right here. Every time you pull the trigger, the safety engages, okay? And I'm just gonna shoot once here. See, every time I pull the trigger, that in engages, even, even if I don't cock it, okay? The chambers, it's not loaded, there's no pressure on it, so it's not even gonna shoot. Pull the trigger, the safety engages every single time. I don't know of a gun that does that. Maybe there is, but to me this is like this is like somebody who has a California government type of mindset would put this on here. To have a safety that engages every time you pull the trigger. And I guarantee you once you pull this trigger uh, 50 times or 75 times like I've done in the last few days and having to switch this, this safety off every time my thumb started to hurt, and it's annoying because a lot of times was cocked, ready to go, got lined up perfectly on a on a fly, and go to pull the trigger, and oh, the safety's on. That happened to me more than one time. So that is truly, truly annoying. Um, I mean, you put a safety on a gun to to keep accidental discharges from happening. You don't put it on there. I mean, and I and I watched the video of the the creator of this. And it's kind of like, I mean, he didn't say this exactly, but to me it's kind of like he put a safety on here just to keep you from shooting at what you want to shoot at. In other words, don't shoot, don't shoot, uh, do not shoot in face or eyes. So it's like he put a safety on here so you don't shoot it in your face or your eyes, but if I want to shoot you in the eyes, I can take the safety off and shoot you in your eye. I mean, this, this serves no purpose. Anyways, um, I've thought about disassembling this thing and finding out some way to to get rid of this and of course he says in the literature and he even says himself do not try to alter this weapon in any way well if you're like me I'm gonna alter this um, so I, you can take this part and he has a video the, the creator of this has a, a video on how to disassemble this um, so you could probably get in there and find some way to disassemble this I saw one video that's probably the easiest way to do it is just to drill a, just put a screw in there just drill you a pilot hole so you make sure you get in the right place and then just put a screw right in there that just holds that safety permanently on. Um, but that is truly, truly, truly annoying. I don't like that at all. Um, but with that being said, this thing has become a good fly killer. Now it says bug assault, but you can see all these pictures of flies here. Really this only kills flies. Um, I do have a, a video of me shooting kind of a lace wing or dragonfly, I don't know, some weird bug that we've got in this year. Um, we've had a lot of rain this year and I've seen a lot of different birds and different bugs that I've never seen before. Um, but I was able to kill that, I'll roll that in. But for the most part, it's going to kill flies. And actually also, and I don't have a video of this, but I did shoot a daddy long legs. Had to shoot him two or three times, but it, it did kill that as well. Um, but if you're going to try to shoot like a hard-shelled bug, like a cockroach or some kind of beetle, it's just, it's not going to be able to do that. Um, but with that being said, uh, if you shoot your hand at this distance, it's going to sting. And you'll, you'll see why it's able to kill flies. I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to penetrate your skin or anything, but, but it stings pretty good. So uh, if you try that, you'll see that it does have um, some good power against, against a fly. 
So, anyways, this is the Bug Assault. Pretty fun little gun to shoot. I've wasted a whole bunch of flies with this thing. Thanks for watching today.